But first, let's get to George Perks of Bespoke Investment Group. And George, let's just start off with what Jared was saying. We're seeing a rally almost across the board today. Certainly, technology is leading the way, consumer discretionary communication services being the outperformer. I bring this up because it also comes on a day where their 10-year yield is getting a bit of a bump. Do you think markets have kind of come to terms with higher yields? I guess, why are we seeing a different reaction today? I think you, you can only go so far for so long uh, with the extreme inverse correlation between interest rates and um, tech stocks that we saw um, in earlier this year. I mean, we hit record levels of, of an inverse relationship there, i.e. Um, it was too too sensitive in the tech space to tech to moves in yields. And now we've sort of had some time here with yields at 52 week highs for, for markets to adapt and sort of get the positioning squared away to the point where it's not all one big trade anymore. Um, so I, I think that's been an important process. These sort of market relationships that we take as, as sort of dogmatic. Um, another one used to be, for instance, uh, crude oil and the S&P 500 moving together. They don't always last for that long, right? And and they can be very strong for a period of time, but then sort of fade off as, as participants adapt and as the narrative changes. And I think that's what we're starting to see in terms of tech and interest rates. I want to talk about something that seems to be falling into the rearview mirror, Archegos. And you said in a note just uh, yesterday, talking about the fallout, we know the banks, Credit Suisse, Nomura, Mitsubishi, all taking a hit. But we got a statement from Senator Brown, uh, who is on the Senate Finance Committee. And he said that we must make sure our financial watchdogs work together to protect the financial system and our economy. I expect the SEC and other regulators to take a closer look. Is the market going to price in some kind of regulatory crackdown to perhaps one day prevent what we saw happen with these large blocks getting dumped or sold uh, on the margin call with Archegos, or is this going to be history? I, I, you know, it's really hard to look at the Archego story and come away with the view that that regulation is, you know, dramatically too easy and we need to really crack down hard. I think the important thing to remember here is that the Archego story was very bad for um, the the people that were actually exposed to those stocks, um, but we didn't see any sort of metastasization into a broader financial disruption um, via funding markets or via defaults by prime brokers or anything like that. And the reason for that is because leverage in the system is relatively moderate. If you compare today to 2000. 2007 or 2006, you know, we're living in a completely different world in terms of bank capital levels. Credit Suisse um, is one of the less well capitalized SIFIs around, and they're still, you know, 12% of risk weighted assets in uh, common equity tier one capital. So, you know, it's really hard to look at the story and say, oh, well, the obvious thing we need to do here is, is make sure this never happens again. I, 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 you know, it depends on what Senator Brown wants to do in terms of preventing this from happening and what sort of regulation that would involve. Um, but, you know, from, from my perspective, Perspective, I think, you know, both as a market participant as uh, and as someone that thinks about um, policy, it's the takeaway for me is that having high capital levels in the banking system works really well. And when these sorts of blowups happen, as they always do inevitably, um, you know, the important thing is to make sure that they're contained and they don't and they don't spread like a wildfire across the financial system. And when capital levels are high, that's relatively easy to do, and that's what we saw in this instance. You know, and George, and going off of that, we talked to Mohamed Alarian yesterday on the program, and he was telling us that this was a third year accident this year so far, and it was driven by people taking much more risk just because of the amount of liquidity in the market. From your perspective as a market participant, is there too much exuberance out there? Have we seen us maybe back off of some of those record highs, though we're at a more healthy level right now? I think it was really easy to to see earlier this year, and, and I, in fact, in fact, wrote a, an opinion piece about this, that that certain parts of the market were clearly in a bubble, whether it was SPACs, whether it was green energy stocks. I mean, there, there was just parabolic price action, absurd valuations. You couldn't lose money. Everyone was piling in, you know, and then we had GameStop hit and then we had interest rates start to rise. And now we've had Ar um, Archegos and we've just had this series of sort of shocks to the system to sort of get people back to reasonable levels. I think a really good proxy for this is um, something like the iClean ICLN um, ETF. You know, if you look at that that ETF, it was similar to ARC, um, ARKK, the ARK Innovation ETF, and just parabolic moves last year that can continued into this year. And it's since broken. You've seen notable outflows. You've seen a breakdown in price and, and a big um, drawdown. And, you know, things are starting to look like they've been stress tested a little bit. Does that mean we, you know, all these sort of very speculative plays are about to go to the moon like a, like a, 
you know, junk cryptocurrency, not necessarily, but, uh, you know, I do think that, um, the, the series of sort of dramas we've had in markets over the past three or four months have shown that while elevate, uh, valuations are very elevated and there is some stuff that's priced unreasonably or, or was priced unreasonably, declines in that price and moderation doesn't mean the end of the world. And, and markets are robust enough to handle that without um, leading to some sort of, you know, larger contagion effect. George Perks, great to speak with you of Bespoke Investment Group.